Welcome to Christ Baptist Church. I thank God that he has allowed us to be in his house of worship one more time. It's so good to be in God's house. Amen. I thank God for those who are here today in person worship. And I thank God for those who are watching by way of one of our social media platforms, YouTube or Facebook. We thank God for you. I'm grateful to God for Brother Paul Kaiser making this broadcast available to you. I thank God for our music director, Chris Sims, and our percussionist, Marcus Carter, who is with us this morning. And in a few moments, they will play music of inspiration as we prepare to worship the Lord. Let us start our worship service in a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, O gracious and merciful Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for one more day's journey. We thank you, God, for watching over us last night. Thank you, Father, for this past week, keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father, if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. We especially thank you for this morning, touching with your finger of love and waking us, starting us on our way in this a brand new day, a day that we've never seen before. And now, Lord, we pray that you go with us today. We pray, O oh God, that you go ahead of us, that you go before us, that you make a way for us. Father, fall fresh on this service. Let everything done and said be pleasing in your sight. And then, Father, I pray that you open hearts and prepare minds to receive your word. Father, we can't thank you enough. You are a mighty, mighty good God, and you do such wonderful things. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. This is our prayer. We're your children, and you're our God. And we seal this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us prepare to go into the worship as our music director, Chris Sims, plays for us music of inspiration as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I'm gonna hold my 
Trustee Stephanie Hewlett is here now to render the welcome. She also is an usher and she helps with the youth. I thank God for Sister Stephanie. She's here now with the welcome. Amen. Well, any and all visiting guests, please stand and remain standing. This welcome is for our Christ Baptist family as well as the social media audience. Christ Baptist welcomes you, welcomes you, welcomes you, and we just invite you to come back anytime. Now, since we can't hug, we can't touch, let's give some air hugs and love because Christ, we want you to know Christ Baptist loves you, Amen. and we love you, and we love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Yes, we are a loving church caring church. As I say every Sunday to the visitors and to the members, you can't find a better place of worship this side of glory than Christ Baptist Church. We're a loving church and for those who are watching by way of social media, when the vaccine comes out and, and the Lord brings us through this crisis, we look forward to seeing you here at Christ Baptist Church because we will welcome you with open arms. Amen. Amen. I thank God for Christ Baptist Church. There is a word today from on high. There is a word from the Lord. And after much prayer and meditation this past week, I asked the Lord to give me a word, a word that is timely for today, a word that is relevant for today. This is a time of rebuilding. This is a time where Forces have tried to tear down uh, the walls of protection that are around justice. We're living in a time where there are forces that have been trying to tear down and damage the walls of fairness, the walls of equality. Here in 2020, we call this year the year of vision. The Lord has revealed to us those who stand for justice and fairness and those who do not. We're seeing it all around us. This nation was built on the foundation of in God we trust. This nation was built on the foundation of one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. But there are forces that have tried to crumble that wall, to tear down that foundation. It's rebuilding time. 
it's time for us to rebuild. We have, we have been met with obstacles and roadblocks along the way. We have made progress over the last few years where we, we all saw the first African-American president of the United States. We're still making progress because just the other day, this nation elected the first African-American female vice president of the United States. So we're making progress. But every time we take a step forward or two steps forward, the devil tries to knock us back. And it's time to rebuild. The previous president built a program of, of affordable health care where everybody in America, even those with pre-existing conditions, could, could gain affordable health care. And somebody has knocked that down. The previous president joined into the Paris Agreement with climate control to make sure that companies are not emitting pollution in the air that is affecting global warming. This person has knocked that down. The previous president established a pandemic alert team, a reaction team around the world so that if any virus would, would come up, we would be able to be on top of it before it reaches America. This president has torn that down. It's time to rebuild now. And I asked the Lord to give me a word that would be relevant today for the rebuilding process. And God led me to the sixth chapter of the prophet Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter six, Nehemiah has been tasked to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. The walls have crumbled because the people, the children of Israel, the they were in captivity under the Persians. They had been gone away so long, 70 years, that no one maintained the walls and the walls lay in ruin. Nehemiah has been tasked by God to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. But he's met with opposition. And even the title of Nehemiah chapter 6 says opposition to rebuilding. And I stopped by to tell you today that whenever you're building something for God, whenever you're trying to establish something for the Lord, the devil is going to oppose you. In Nehemiah chapter 6, we will read verses 1 through 4, and then we will drop down to verse 15. In Nehemiah chapter 6, and if you're able to stand, let us rest to our feet for the reading of God's word. Nehemiah chapter six, and I'm reading the New International Version. The Bible reads, when word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies, that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates. Sanballat, and Geshem sent this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and I cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Verse four reads, Four times they sent me the same message, and each time I gave them the same answer. Dropping down to verse 15. So the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. I want to preach and teach from the subject title as you take your seat, the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. This morning, I want to preach and teach from the subject title, Overcome Opposition. Make sure that despite the opposition, that you keep on building. That's the title. In spite of the opposition, keep on building. Brick by brick. In spite of the opposition, keep right on building brick by 
brick. Let us bow in a moment of prayer. O oh, gracious and merciful Father in heaven, thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to serve you. I'm humbled by this awesome responsibility. And now, Lord, I pray that you use me as a vessel, if you will, and merchandise your word through me and to me and to these, your people. Let your word go forth with boldness and understanding where your name is magnified and glorified. Your people are edified and your kingdom is advanced. This is my prayer. I'm your servant and you're my God. And I pray in the name of Jesus, amen. In spite of the opposition, Keep right on building brick by brick. In our scripture today, Nehemiah chapter 6, give you some background. Nehemiah belonged to the tribe of Judah, the same tribe that Jesus came out of. His family was from Jerusalem, and he lived some 440 years before the birth of Christ. He lived at a time known as the Jewish dispersion, a time when the Assyrians and the Persians overran Jerusalem and took the Jewish people into exile. Nehemiah was a very bright and gifted young man who found favor with King Xerxes. Xerxes made Nehemiah his personal cupbearer. Nehemiah was the king's personal valet. He would taste the king's food before the king ate it. He would bring the king his cup, his water. He brought the king food and drink. Nehemiah waited on the king hand and foot. Nehemiah lived in the palace, but he longed for the day that he could return to his home in Jerusalem. He longed for that day, although he held a prestigious position in the palace, although the king held him in high esteem, allowing him to live in the palace, Nehemiah longed to go back home. He longed to return to his home in Jerusalem. He was concerned about the condition of the holy city. He was concerned about the condition of Jerusalem. The holy city lay in ruins. And the wall, the symbol of power and protection, the wall in Jerusalem, their fortress was now a pile of rubble, a pile of bricks. The wall in Jerusalem had great significance. There was a portion of the wall that was reserved for prayer. It was reserved and called the wall of faith. It was called the wall of hope, the wall of justice. Even in mourning, there was a section of the wall where you could go and face the wall and cry out to God. It was called the wailing wall. The wall in Jerusalem had great significance and now is lying in a pile of rubble, a pile of bricks, because the, the, the Jewish people have been taken into captivity and no one was there to tend and attend to the wall. Remember down, when the Jews were taken into captivity, and whether it was by the Persians or the Assyrians or the Babylonians, Whenever they take the Jewish people into captivity, they would only take the healthy ones. They would only take the gifted ones, the younger ones, the smartest ones. They would take with them all the artisans, all the architects, all the designers and, and philosophers. They would even take with them all the prophets. And they would leave behind those who were feeble, those who were sick, those who could do very little. And so the walls of Jerusalem lay in ruin for nearly 70 years. Nehemiah was smart. Nehemiah was young and gifted. He knew how to do things. Nehemiah had good communication skills. Nehemiah had good administrative skills. He knew how to bring people together for a common purpose. That's where we are today in our world. We need somebody who can bring people together. We need a leader who knows how to work with people and bring people together. We don't need a leader to divide us and divide the people. We're tired of, of leaders who drive a wedge between this group and that group. We need somebody who is able to bring us all 
together. Nehemiah was able to bring people together for a common purpose. And so Nehemiah, with the king's favor, he is allowed to return home and rebuild the walls. This brings us to our scripture this morning in Nehemiah chapter 6. Don't you know when you're building something for the Lord, the devil gets busy? Don't you know when you're working for God, the devil comes after you? Here in Nehemiah 6 and verse 1, he realizes that he has some enemies. All he's doing is a good thing. But in verse 1, he says, I'm almost finished with the wall. There are no gaps in the wall. All I need to do is hang the doors in the gates. And here comes Sambelet. Here comes Tobiah. Here comes Geshem and the rest of our enemies. The rest of the devil's agents trying to stop this good work. Whenever you're doing a work for the Lord, the devil will come at you in all kinds of ways. The devil will send his hellhounds after you. Whenever you're doing God's work, he will throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink. He'll come at you in all kinds of ways. Too many ways to discuss this morning. But there are four ways I want to talk to you about that the devil always uses to stop you from working. Four ways. I call them the four D's of the devil or the devil's four D's. I want us to look at, at this. The first one is distraction. It's right there in verse 2. The devil uses this weapon of distraction. That's what's happening in our world today. Distraction. People are still talking about the election. The election is over. The votes have been counted. States have been certified. States have been called. And, and there are people who are still, are still talking about they stole the election. It's a conspiracy. Illegal voters, when they should be concentrating on this COVID-19, when they should be concentrating on how to get people healed and not allow people to get sick because there are so many distractions. The devil uses distraction right there in verse 2. Verse 2 reads, Sam Bellin and Geshem sent this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me. San Bellop and Geshem said, let us get together and meet on, in one of the places where we used to hang out, Nehemiah. That's what the devil will do. Try to distract you. Try to take you back to where you used to go. He says, Nehemiah, come on. I know you're holy now. I know you're a prophet. I know you serve God and worship the Lord. But come on down to one of the villages where we used to hang out. The devil will do that to you. Come on out of church for a little while. Let's go have a drink. Let's have one for old time's sake. Come on, let's go back to one of our watering holes. Come on, smoke one with me. Drink one with me. Distraction. Let us meet in one of the villages on the plain of oh no. But thanks be to God, Nehemiah said no no to oh no. <laughs> Distraction. They were trying to get Nehemiah away from God's work. And the devil would do the same thing to you with his distractions. He will say, I know you sing in the choir. I know you serve on the usher board. I know you like church and Sunday school. But you can miss a few Sundays. Come on, let's, let's go to one of our old spots. Distraction. The devil will do the same thing. Anything that will keep you from doing God's work, we have to learn from Nehemiah. How Nehemiah responded in the C clause of verse, of verse 2 when he says, but they were scheming to harm me. Look at Nehemiah's response in verse 3 when they said, come on, let's go down to one of the villages on the plain of, oh no. Nehemiah in verse 3, he says, so I sent messengers to them with this reply. I'm carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should I? Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Why should I come down? Why should I stop doing the Lord's work just to hang out with you? That's distraction. And in verse 4, he says, four times they sent me the same message. And each time I gave them the same answer. Don't let the devil distract you. Distraction is anything that takes your attention away from what you're supposed to be doing. Luke chapter 10, verse 40, tells us that Martha was distracted. 
when she was serving food and she says to Jesus, Master, tell my sister Mary to help me. And Jesus said, Mary is serving me. You've been distracted. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 35, serve the Lord without distraction. David was distracted, was distracted one morning when he looked out over his balcony and he saw Bathsheba. He was distracted. Samson was distracted when he allowed Delilah to cut his hair. Don't let the devil distract you. So the first tool and weapon the devil uses to stop your work is distraction. The second weapon the devil uses is defamation. Defamation is right there in verse 5. Defamation is, is calling you out of your name. Defamation is giving you a label and, and calling you everything but a child of God. And calling you names. You see that today. People are defaming one another. Crooked Hillary, Little Marco, Sleepy Joe, a nasty woman. Defamation. Just using defamation, people calling you names or, or trying to defame. It's right there in the word defamation to discredit your name. Verse five, then the fifth time Sanballat sent his aid to me with the same message. And in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written. It is reported among the nations and Geshem says it's true. Underline that. And Geshem says it's true that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt. Therefore, you are building this wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you want to become their king. And even You've even appointed prophets to make this proclamation in Jerusalem that there is a king in Judah. They're lying on Nehemiah. They're telling and writing this letter saying, we're going to tell the people that you're building this wall just so you can be their king. And then he says, now we're going to report this back to the king. So you better come on, let us meet together. They knew that Nehemiah had found favor with the king. And they're trying to discredit his name. Here's Sanballat and Nehemiah. His enemies have written this open letter to be distributed among the people and then sent to the king saying, Nehemiah, you're not interested in rebuilding this wall. You're not interested in, in serving the Lord. You're trying to feather your own nest. You're trying to become famous and become a king over us. And so we're going to send this letter to all the people, Nehemiah. We're going to even send it to the king. And they're going to revolt against you, Nehemiah. So you better come on and let's meet together. Otherwise, we're going to send this letter out. This was a smear tactic defamation. They're trying to use slander to destroy his character. Defamation. And here's what I like about it. Nehemiah didn't even try to fight these lies. I like what Nehemiah did here. After this long drawn out letter was created, Nehemiah gave a very short response in verse 8. In verse 8, Nehemiah said, I sent this reply. Nothing like what you're saying is happening. You're just making it up out of your head. Don't you know people just make up lies on you? They just made it up. He says, that's not true. You're making it up. They're lies. And he went right on working. He went right on working. Uh, he says, in verse 6, it says, and Geshem says it's true. That's what I wanted you to underline. When it says this report and Geshem says it's true, the devil always gets a cosigner. The devil will always get somebody to co-sign his lies, not just anybody. He'll get someone prominent, someone important, someone who sits on the board, someone with the title. And Geshem says it's true. But Nehemiah says, I don't care who says it's true. They are lies. They are lies. And you know what? You can't chase down every lie that's told on you. You'll get dizzy trying to chase down every lie. Chasing lies is like trying to chase down fleas. And you can't chase every flea of lies that's told on you. Don't let a lie stop you. Why? Because they lied on Jesus. Don't let lies stop you because they called Jesus a wine bibber when he turned water into wine at a wedding in Cana. They called Jesus a glutton when he ate with tax collectors and sinners. They lied on Jesus trying to defame him. They call Jesus Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And so don't let the devil stop you with defamation. 
The third weapon the devil uses is dismay. He uses dismay, and when I say dismay, I'm talking about fear. Dismay will make you, make you afraid, make you scared. The Bible says Sanballat and the other enemies tried to strike fear in the hearts of the workers. In verse 9, they were trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But Nehemiah said, I prayed now, Lord, strengthen my hands. The devil knows that fear is one of the most powerful weapons. We're not supposed to be afraid, but as human beings, we do fear sometimes. We do fear. It's hard to work when you're afraid. Fear will make your teeth chatter. Fear will make your knees knock together. Fears, fear will make you weak in the knees. Fear is a powerful weapon because fear will make you stand still when you should be running. Fear is powerful, but we have God on our side. And God does not give the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. And here's what I like. Every time an angel approached someone in the Bible, the first thing out of the angel's mouth was, fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid. In fact, 365 times in the Bible, the phrase fear not appears. 365 times the Bible says fear not. That's one for every day in the year. That means every morning you get up, you can say, thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. And I will fear not. This day, 365 times. And when the devil tries to frighten you, you ought to do like Nehemiah did and pray, God, strengthen my hands. Pray and ask God for courage. Pray and ask the Lord for strength. Ask God to help you to endure to the end. Don't let the devil frighten you and keep you from doing God's work. And so he tried to use fear tried to use dismay. And finally, the fourth weapon that the devil uses is deception. The fourth weapon is deception. We know the devil is a deceiver, and this is the hardest one to spot because deception looks right, but it's wrong. Deception looks good, but it's bad. Deception is that wolf in sheep's clothing. Deception is that smile on their face, but that stab in the back. Deception, deception wraps his hate in the garments of love and appears to be loving when it's actually hating. Deception right there in verse 10. In verse 10, the Bible says, One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mahitabel, who was shut in at his home. And he said, Let us meet in the house of God inside the temple and let us close the temple doors because men are coming to kill you, Nehemiah. By night they are coming to kill you. They had sent word to Nehemiah that the only safe place for him was to hide in the temple. The enemy is coming, Nehemiah. Go hide in the temple. You better run. You better hide in the temple of God. But Nehemiah deciphered that message in verse 11. Nehemiah said, I'm a layman and I can't go into the temple. Only the priests can go behind the curtain. Only the priests can go into the Holy of Holies. I'm just a layman. I will not go. You have to ask God to grant you the gift of discernment. You have to ask God to help you to make the right decisions. That's what Nehemiah did in verse 12. He said, I realized that God had not sent him and that he prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so I would commit this sin by doing this and give me a bad name to discredit me. Nehemiah was in the house of someone he thought he could trust, but the enemy had gotten to them too. Shemaiah, Shemaiah told him, let us meet in the temple knowing that that would ruin him. Deception. The devil will deceive you when you're doing a great work. The devil will try to get you to do something that looks right, but it's wrong. That's deception. The devil, he deceived Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden because he is the great deceiver. 
He deceived Cain and, and made Cain kill his own brother Abel because he is a great deceiver. He deceived King Ahab and Jezebel. He, he deceived Samson with Delilah. He, he deceived Judas with 30 pieces of silver. When you're doing a great work and building for the Lord, the devil will try to, number one, distract you. The devil will try to defame you. The devil will try to use dismay and frighten you. And then the devil will try to deceive you. Don't let the devil stop you. How can I stop the devil from stopping me, preacher? I hear you out there. How can I overcome the devil's deeds? Well, I stopped by to tell you today, when you're building something for God, you got to build it on the solid rock. When you build it on the solid rock, and that rock is the word, that rock is Jesus. Whatever opposition comes when you build on the solid rock, it can't stop you. Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 24, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down and the streams rose up and the winds blew against that house, but it did not fall because the foundation of the building was on the rock. Jesus said, upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When you build something, make sure you build it on the rock and the rock is the word and the word is Jesus. I stopped by to tell you this morning that when you're building something, the Bible is your blueprint. Those 66 books are the bricks. Those 1,189 chapters, that's the mortar. And Jesus is the chief cornerstone. I'm going to preach it all by myself. When you're building, make sure you build on the rock. Build on God's word. Build on Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Build on the first five books. Build on Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Build on First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, brick by brick. Make sure you build on Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs, Song of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes, brick by brick. Make sure that you build on Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah. I'm talking about building brick by brick. Build on Micah and Nahum, Rebekah and Zephaniah, Haggai and Zechariah, and Malachi. Brick by brick. Build on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts of the Apostles and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, brick by brick. Build on 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, and James. Build on 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation, brick by brick. Build on Genesis, because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Build on Exodus. God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Build on Leviticus. Be holy because I'm holy. Build on Numbers. Whenever you see the ark, you ought to rise up. Build on Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Build on Joshua. Choose ye this day who you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Build on Ruth. When she said, don't leave me, take me with you. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Brick by brick. Build on Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Build on Isaiah. He was wounded for my transgressions. Bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. Build on Jeremiah, he's like fire shut up in my bones. Build on Ezekiel, he said he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Brick by brick, brick by brick. Don't let the devil stop you, because God so loved the world. 
He gave his only begotten son, brick by brick. Jesus said, whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them shall never be thirsty, brick by brick. Jesus said, a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd that lay down his life for his sheep. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me, brick by brick, brick by brick. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee, brick by brick. I said brick by brick. Jesus said the Son of Man must suffer, must suffer many things and be crucified. Thanks be to God that Jesus went to Calvary and died on an old rugged cross. Build on that. He hung his head and he died. After they nailed his hands and they nailed his feet, he hung his head and then he died. Brick by brick, they put him down in an old dusty grave. Brick by brick, stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday. Brick by brick, all night Saturday night. Brick by brick, but thanks be to God, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning. I said early Sunday morning, he got up, stepped out on resurrection ground, raised his hand. is in my hand, brick by brick, forgiveness power, mercy power, grace power, salvation power, brick by brick, brick by brick, build on God's word, don't let the devil stop you, despite the opposition, keep right on building, brick by brick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Let us keep building brick by brick. Oh, we've overcome so many obstacles in this life. Amen? But we have to keep right on building. Keep right on working. I thank God for his word. And on the strength and power of God's word, on the strength of the preached word, I offer the invitation to discipleship. The doors to my father's house are open. Now is the time and this is the place. As we rest to our feet, I offer the invitation to discipleship. Man, woman, boy, or girl, unchurched, unsaved, uncommitted. If you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sin, now is the time. Won't you come? Won't you come? Man, woman, boy, or girl, the doors to my father's house are open. Won't you come? To our friends watching by way of social media, I extend that same invitation to you. All you have to do is make that confession today. Confess that Jesus is Lord. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father in heaven, you shall be saved. Make that confession today. And once you make that confession, I pray that God put a covering on you and order your steps from this day forward. After making that confession, make sure that you get into a good Bible reading, Bible teaching church. We would love to have you here at Christ Baptist Church. But if you can't join with us, make sure that you get under the tutelage of a good Bible teaching church. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. Oh, what a mighty good God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. It's meditation time. This is a time where our music director plays for us music of meditation where we thank God and reflect on his goodness. It's a time where we allow the word of God and the preached word to fill the sanctuary 
and penetrate hearts. It's meditation time where we can thank God collectively and individually for all the blessings that he's bestowed upon us since we were together last.
marvelous testimony by way of the, of the instrument. Amen. Lord, I love you more than anything. Amen. It's prayer time. It's time to go to God in prayer. I'm so grateful to God that we have this hotline to God, this, this avenue, this SOS, where we can approach the altar and pray to Almighty God. It's prayer time. And if there was ever a time where we needed to go to God in prayer, it's now. Deacon George Hollingsworth is coming now to render the altar prayer. We want to pray for our community. We want to pray for our nation and our world. We want to pray knowing that some 7 billion people are going to have to be vaccinated over the next several months. What a Herculean task. Pray for the scientists and the doctors and the medical workers. Pray for our children as they're learning at home. Pray for our seasoned saints who are enduring during this, this, this time of pandemic. It's prayer time. Pray for every church that's open in the name of Jesus. Deacon Hollingsworth is here now to render the altar prayer. Let us bow. This morning, our Heavenly Father, we just come to just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for still being God and being God all by yourself. Thank you for the greatest gift you could have given mankind. And that's a part of you, your son Jesus, who paid the ultimate price and died on the cross for our sins. And now he is sitting on the right hand side of you, the Father. And yet, there's another part of you that you left here for your children, and that is the Holy Spirit. And because of that, Father, we just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you're doing, going to do, and do in our lives. Father, you know those that are going through some things, those at the hospitals, those that are in the prison doors, those that are at home and can't get out. You know what they're going through and you know what families are going through where they can't get together and socialize like they used to. But because of you, you're giving us the time to reflect on our lives and look and see how great you have been to us. You have been a good God. And the more you have done for us, the least we have given you the respect. And Father, you're telling us in this pandemic that there's still work that you want us to do. Let us do that which is pleasing in your eyesight and not that is pleasing to mankind. For there is a conflict between man and you. And I'm just thankful that your son Jesus came to set the example and to teach us what you want us to do. Father, let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify you, which is in heaven. For it's not about us. It's all about you. And Father, as we approach the Thanksgiving this year, we pray that even if families can't get together, that there's a social media they can somehow communicate. They could call and check on each other. They can look at each other on Zoom and communicate and see the smiles and joy and to know that they are love. Father, you have been good to us. And now is the time for us to reflect on how good you have really been. Lead us in the right direction. Strengthen us where we're weak 
And trust those that are going through something and let them realize that they're not by themselves. That you're with them by their side. And what I love about you, you said that no matter what we're going through, you will be by our side, even to the ends of the world. Father, I give you the praise, I give you the glory, I give you all the honor, for only you are worthy to be praised. You're only worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah to your name. These and other blessing in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God for Deacon Hollingsworth and that wonderful prayer. Amen. Before we go out from here, it's donation time. Let us take a moment and prepare our tithes, offerings, and donations. Those who are here in in-person worship, you were given a plastic baggie as you came in, and in that baggie there is an envelope where you can insert your offering and your donation, and then you can deposit it in one of the boxes at the rear of the sanctuary upon dismissal. It's donation time, and let me say to those who are watching by way of social media, we thank God for all that you've done for Christ Baptist Church, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. You'll see on your screen the variety of ways that you can give and donate to Christ Baptist Church. And we also want you to hit our like button and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. We want you to follow us and be part of our family. We thank you for your offerings, your gifts of love and your donations. And they're not being wasted because leading up to Thanksgiving celebration, our food pantry gave away hundreds of turkeys. Hundreds of people were in line to receive turkey boxes and, and Thanksgiving dinners. And the week before that, they gave out ham. So the monies are being put to good use. The ministries of the church shall continue. And so I thank God for you and your donations. To you, the members of Christ Baptist Church, I thank you. I thank God for you, you who support your church. And it's good to support your church. It's offering time. And let's prepare those tithes, offerings, and donations. Let us pray the offertory prayer. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you, God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And now, Father, that we have this opportunity to give back, to give back to you a portion of that which you've given to us. It all belongs to you. And we thank you, Lord, for the gift. We thank you for the giver. We, bless, we ask that you bless those who have the desire to give. And then, O oh Lord, bless these gifts to be used to your glory. This is our prayer. We're your church, we're your children, and you're our God. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Did you enjoy the service today? Were you blessed by the word, blessed by the music? We thank God for you, and we look forward to you joining with us on next Sunday. We thank God for you coming out today. We thank God for you watching by way of social media. We look forward to worshiping together again on next Sunday. And now as our officers prepare to take their positions, as we dismiss by way of social distancing, let us stand to our feet for our closing prayer and benediction. Father, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen. We thank you for all that our ears have heard and all that our hearts have felt. We thank you, Lord, for the music ministry. We thank you for the media ministry. We thank you for those who've come out to worship in person today. Father, we thank you for the preach word today, but we especially thank you for Jesus. And now as we prepare to go out from this place, but not out of your presence, we pray, oh God, that you go with us, that you go ahead of us, go before us, that you make a way for us. Now may the grace of God as Father and as Son and the sweet communion of God as Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each of these thy people now, henceforth, and forevermore, world without end. And all of us can say together, Amen, Amen, Amen.
God bless you. Wave at somebody on your way out. God bless you and God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.